So, as you guys can read, um, our very last section, which I split across two days, we'll be talking about the structures of rational functions, which sort of seems like a, a topic out of from left field. We spent all of last week talking about polynomial functions. Why in the world would I ever change gears and talk about rational functions? Well, if we take a look at the definition of a rational function, um, a rational function is a function, no duh, of the form n of x over d of x. Now, n and d are just function labels that so they could have been anything, but you guys can probably guess why I chose n and d, numerator and denominator, where n of x and d of x are polynomials. So that's sort of why I included rational functions in this unit, uh, because they are built upon polynomials, so not surprisingly, their structure follows some similarities. Now there are certainly differences as well. When it comes to polynomial functions, their structures are predictable. They're smooth and continuous. Their end behaviors, I mean, we don't have a lot of choices. They can either go up and to the right or up and to the left, down to the right and down to the left. But when we have rational functions, things tend to get a little bit more complex and crazy. For example, uh, let's just Take a look at a few random graphs. So uh, before the lesson started, if you guys weren't, uh, if you guys noticed, I just went on Desmos and literally made up some random functions. I just typed in letters and, and numbers. So there's no special reason why these functions exist. I just typed random looking functions. You don't have to copy them down. It's just purely for visual sake. But let's take a look at these three examples. Notice they are rational functions. They're just two polynomials divided by each other. So here's a simple linear divided by linear. So the first thing we should notice is, is it's not continuous. It is impossible to draw this entire function without lifting your pencil. Um, okay, this is not too bad. It looks like a simple, you know, two branches. But let's take a look at another example of rational function. This guy here. Well, that's definitely a lot different. And then let's take a look at this guy here. Very different still. So, I mean, these are just three examples. It's not like any uh, classic examples, literally just randomly made up. But the point I want to try to make is the shape of rational functions. I can't predict them like I can with polynomials. Oh, I know all even squares are going to look like a U, a parabola. Oh, all odd powers are going to look like a squiggle S. It's not true with rationals. How the heck can I predict his shape when it just seems random? Well, it's not as random as it seems. Let's go ahead and take a look at this example here, because I think this picture sort of exemplifies uh, some key aspects here. So I'm just going to take a screenshot, and if you want to, you don't have to be accurate with tick marks, but if you want to draw a general shape, you can. So I'm going to just take a screenshot here. Um, so let's say I want to take, oh, this guy here. Oops. That's not, that's not working. Yeah. Um, let's just go ahead and do a quick sketch. So it's 2x minus 4x plus 3. So if I were to take a look at f of x equals 2x minus 4 over x plus 3, I'm not going to draw any tick marks. We're not going to draw any numbers. This is just a rough sketch. But we saw something that looked like... Something that looked like this. Again, just a rough, rough sketch. Something that looked like that, right? A rough, rough sketch. Well, the reason why I know, or the reason why it looked like this, is because it, it has some key distinct features that rational functions have that uh, regular polynomial functions don't. At the far, far ends of the graph, either top and bottom, up or down, the graph seems to go on forever, but in sort of a, a straight line. It's not a straight line, but it sort of looks like it. At least horizontally, at the far left and far right, 
it looks like the graph was following this line. At least up and down, it looked like the graph was following that line. Those dotted lines are called asymptotes. And an asymptote is a value in which a function gets really, 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 and did I mention really close to? Now for this particular rational function, and I'm not saying that this is a, a, an example that will sh uh, explain all of them, but for this particular rational function, he had a, both a vertical asymptote and a horizontal asymptote. Now they are not random. Fortunately, they are predictable. We can actually, based upon an equation, know where these asymptotes exist. And these asymptotes are gonna help us know the overall structure. So the idea for today is the structure or the shape of a rational function, we utilize the same techniques, the same logic as we did all last week, except I'm adding one extra layer. Find the asymptotes. That's sort of like your skeleton or the blueprint of the structure. So naturally, how the heck do we find the asymptotes? Finding asymptotes. We'll start with the easiest one, or, uh, vertical asymptotes. To find vertical asymptotes, just set the denominator equal to zero. That's it. And solve. So that's the easy part. The horizontal asymptotes is where you actually have to do a little bit of thinking. All right, just a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit. To find the horizontal asymptotes, you have to compare the degrees of the numerator and denominator. So if I'm comparing two things, I only have one of three options. They can be the same, and they can be different. And when they're different, one has to be bigger than the other. So what are some of my possibilities? Possibility number one, if the degree of the numerator, which I'm going to abbreviate thusly, so DEG parentheses numerator means the degree of the numerator, if it is the same as the degree of the denominator, then your horizontal asymptote will always be y equals the leading coefficient of the numerator divided by the leading coefficient of the denominator. Well, what are some po other possibilities? Well, they could be the same or they cannot be the same. And if they're not the same, one has to be bigger than the other. So let's say the degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator. If that's the case, your horizontal asymptote, you don't have to do any thinking. It's always y equals zero, always. And lastly, the other option if the exponent is bigger on top, if the degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator, you don't have any horizontal asymptotes at all. There is none. So as I said, our process, our the steps that we're going to take to sketch rational functions, they're going to be nearly identical to the steps we take to sketch regular polynomial functions. The only thing that's the exception is we have these extra components to find. We've got to find the asymptotes. Here are the rules to find the asymptotes, both vertical and horizontal. Other than that, this should be the same thing as last week. To prove it, let's just do a couple of examples. So for the first example, let's say I ask you to um, sketch f of x equals 3x squares minus 2x minus 1 over 2x squares plus 3x minus 2. Okay. 
Now, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to do an optional step. Um, I suppose in the grand scheme of things, you don't have to do this, but I highly suggest it. It makes life easy. Um, anytime I work with rationals, I always want to factorize and simplify. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take an optional step. I'm going to factorize everything. Right? Sometimes it's helpful. Sometimes it's not, but it doesn't hurt to try. And in this particular example, hey, everything's factor uh, factorable. So in the numerator, we have 3x and x. And that's going to be 3x plus 1, 3, uh, x minus 1. And in the denominator, we have 2x and x. And that's going to be 2x minus 1, uh, x plus 2. Right? With everything factorized, I can cancel. I can reduce if, if I can, but I can't. So it's not going to be a waste of work. It's, it's easy. It's easy work, uh, but there's nothing I can simplify. Next, what I want to do is find all like the special points. What are some special points on, on a graph? You have your x-intercepts, of course. You have your y-intercepts. And for rational functions, we have asymptotes. There's no particular order in which to find the pieces. You just want to find them all. So no rhyme or reason of the ordering. Let's go ahead and find the pieces. Let's start with, um, I don't know, x-intercepts. Why not? To refresh our memories, to find the x-intercepts of a rational function, you just set the top equal to zero. That's it. That's all you got to do. Now, you could set the original numerator equal to zero and solve, or this is why I like factoring. It makes solving easier. I'm going to use the factored form. Uh, so I'm going to set the factored form, 3x plus 1 times x minus 1 equal to zero and solve. And I hope it doesn't take a lot of thinking. You guys know immediately that the answer is negative 1 third and x equals 1. Right. That's why I like factored form. It makes solving easy. To find the y-intercept, just as a review or as a refresher, you want to plug in x equals 0. Now, when I plug in x equals 0, you certainly can use the factored form, but I'm actually going to use the original. Why is that? Well, you guys know that when you plug in a 0, it just everything turns to 0, right? So if I make x equals 0, any term that contains an x just disappears. So this guy here goes to 0. This guy here goes to zero. This guy here goes to zero. This guy here goes to zero. So to find the y-intercept, if I use the original function, you just look at it. What is the y-intercept? Negative one on top over negative two on the bottom, or simply one half. So it's going to be y equals zero minus zero minus one over zero plus zero minus two, which equals a positive one half. So that's why I like to use the original for the y-intercept, because you just look at it. Um, what other information would be good? Uh, the asymptotes. Uh, so let's find the vertical asymptote. That's setting the bottom equal to zero. And again, anytime I solve, I'd like factored form. So I'm going to use the factored version because it's easier to solve. So that's going to be 2x minus 1, x plus 2 equals to zero. Uh, hopefully it doesn't take a lot of thinking. That's x equals 1 half, x equals negative 1, negative 2, excuse me. And then lastly, the horizontal asymptote. Horizontal asymptote. This one should not be any math at all. It's just pure looking. You just have to compare it. So in this case here, the asymptotes, you have to look at the exponents. In this example, the degree of the numerator is the same as the degree in the denominator. So the horizontal asymptote is just the ratio of the leading coefficients. It's just the ratio of the numbers. So therefore, the horizontal asymptote is y equals 3 halves. I promise you that is going to be all the work you need to do to sketch, which I hope is not a lot of work at all. Top equals 0, bottom equals 0, plug in a 0, and then compare the exponents. That's not too bad, right? To sketch, just like we do to polynomials, we're going to use the sign diagram, make things easy. So I'll draw my sign diagram. How does a sign diagram change for rationals as to compare to polynomials? So when it comes to sign diagrams, you only plot x-intercepts and vertical asymptotes. Basically, since a sign diagram is an x-axis, you only plot the x-values. Note, vertical asymptotes are always open circles x-intercepts are closed circles. 
So I'm only gonna put my x equals stuff. Those are your x intercepts and your vertical asymptotes. So in our work here, here's the x intercepts, here are the vertical asymptotes. I'm only gonna plot those numbers. So we have negative two, we have negative a third, positive one half, and a positive one. Notice I'm not spacing them out equally. I don't really care about the spacing just yet. Um, X intercepts are closed, so negative one third and one are closed, and my vertical asymptotes are open, negative two and one half. Now, if we were sketching polynomials, we would get the ends here using end behavior. But we don't have a polynomial function, we have a rational function. Normally what would then we would do is go fishing. Take an x value from these regions, plug it in to see if it's positive or negative. Or let's take a look at the generic example that we found out uh, using Desmos. By definition, isn't end behavior what happens to the graph to the far left, far right? Well, in a rational function, what happens to the far left or far right? That's the horizontal asymptotes. So although it would be weird to talk about what is the end behavior of this function, we can quasi talk about end behavior by looking at the horizontal asymptote. In this particular example, what was the horizontal asymptote? Three halves. Three halves. That's positive, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know what happens in the middle, but I do know at the far, far ends, he should approach three halves, which is a positive number. So without plugging stuff in, I know for a fact that these guys will be positive. I wanna make sure everyone understands that. I did not have to plug numbers in because I knew the horizontal asymptote is 1.5, which is positive. We're okay with that. Then you just use multiplicities to fill in the rest. So these, these values here, I got from here and here. What were the multiplicities of all of those answers? One, which is odd, which means every single sign is going to change. I know it's going to be plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. That should take you like five seconds in real time. Then it's time to sketch. To sketch, you literally put all the information on the coordinate grid. It, it doesn't get any more difficult than that. Literally just put everything down on a grid. So when it comes time to sketch, I'm going to try to be somewhat accurate by tick marks, by using tick marks here. And since I have little fractions, one third, three halves, I'm going to make the tick marks pretty spacious just so I can get in between some numbers. Again, there's no order in which to put your information down. I like to do asymptotes first. So I have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative two. So I'll draw that in with a dotted line. I have a vertical asymptote at x equals one half. So I'll draw that in. We have a horizontal asymptote at y equals three halves, which is 1.5. So I'll draw that in. I have x-intercepts at negative a third. Just approximate. I'm not going to break out a ruler and measure. So that looks like a negative one third to me. And I have an x-intercept at one. And we had a y-intercept, right, of one half right there. I haven't done any sketching. All I did was I put my information on coordinate grid. You guys OK with that? Now it's time to sketch. Well, I read from left to right. So at the very, very left, I need to be positive. Do you guys see here how on the very, very left you have a horizontal asymptote? The question is, okay, well, how do I know which one is which? Because if I have a horizontal asymptote to the left, isn't it possible that I could hug the line from the top or I could hug the line on the bottom? How do I know which one's which? And I hate to say this, but you guys have to do a little bit of thinking. I know some of you guys just outright refuse to think, but you're going to have to do a little bit of thinking. If, if the real graph starts on the top here, let's move rightwards. Okay, I'm moving rightwards, I'm moving rightwards. Oh no, there's this brick wall here. There's the vertical asymptote. The job of a vertical asymptote is to shoot the graph up or down. Well, since I'm above the line, I'll shoot up. That is one possibility, do you guys agree? 
if the graph started below. Okay, go rightwards. Do, 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 do. Oh, it's a vertical asymptote. I should get shot down because I was below the line. That's also a possibility. Yes? Our question is to decide which one is the right graph. Do you guys agree if he took the bottom path, if this was the right picture here, he would have to cross the x-axis? This right here would be an x-intercept. According to our math here, is that number, I'm going to approximate, that's like negative 2.5. Is negative 2.5 an x-intercept? No. So our math tells us this bottom path is impossible. So I know for a fact, using pure logic, that it can't be the bottom path, but it must be the top path. So I hate to say it, guys. I mean, there's, there's no trick about it. You just got to use some thinking. Okay, once I have my sign diagram, is it above or is it below? You just got to use logic. You okay with that? All right. Sketching rational functions is like driving a manual car. Starting is the hardest part. But once you get going, it's just smooth. It's gravy. So let's read. After the vertical asymptote at negative 2, what does it say? I need to be negative, right? So I know I'm not going to start on top, but I'm going to start on the bottom. Then I'm going to go and hit my x-intercept. So now I'm at my x-intercept here. Now to the right of the x-intercept, I should be positive. So I'm going to keep going up and hit the y-intercept. Because it tells me I'm going to be in the positive region, I know he's not going to swing down because swinging down would be negative. So I know he's going to keep going up because my sign diagram says positive. After my vertical asymptote at one half, the sign diagram says negative. So I know I'm going to have to start on the bottom. So I'm going to start on the bottom here. Rise up to hit your x-intercept. And then to the right of the x-intercept, he remains positive forever. So I know he's not going to swing back down. I know he's going to have to go positive and hug that line. That is the graph of the function. And all I did was nothing fancy. I just read my sign diagram. So that's basically the moral of today's lesson. It's the same thing we did last week, sketching uh, polynomials with sign diagrams, except we're doing rational functions, and rational functions have the extra layer of asymptotes. An asymptote is a place on the graph where the, the line sort of hugs, hugs it. Okie dokie? Yeah. Right. I really can't make it any more complex than that. Literally just find all the pieces and graph it. Uh, just so because I feel like leaving you guys with more than just one example, uh, let's just do another one so you have a pair in your notebooks. Uh, but you'll find out that it's going to be literally the same thought process. So nothing fancy about this example. It's just another one to add to our books. So I'm going to try to do this one a little bit faster just to let you guys know that once you get into the groove of things, these don't take a lot of time. These don't take a lot of work uh, than, than, it, than you might think it does. So same instruction, sketch. First thing I like to do is factorize and simplify if possible. I can't really do anything to the numerator so he stays the same, but I know the denominator factorizes into x plus 5 quantity squared. Next, I'm going to find all my special pieces in no particular order. X-intercepts, y-intercepts, vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes. Uh, so let's do the x-intercept, which is top equals 0. I hope I don't have to write it down. That gives me a negative 21 fifths. So we're okay. Actually, you know what? This are notes. Let's, I'm not going to be lazy. I'm going to show my work. 5x plus 21 equals 0. So x equals negative 21 fifths. My y-intercept... I'm going to plug in 0 for x. So I get y equals 5 times 0 plus 21 over 0 squared plus 10 times 0 plus 25. And I get 21 over 25. Um, vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes is the bottom equals to 0. So I get x plus 5 quantity squared equals 0. That's x equals negative 5. But I do note he has an even multiplicity because the multiplicity is 2. And last but not least, horizontal asymptote. To find the horizontal asymptote, all you're doing is just comparing the exponents. Compare the degrees of your fraction. 
So if the degree in this case of the top is smaller than the degree in the bottom, what's our horizontal asymptote? Y equals zero always. That's it. That's, that's the hardest math calculations you have to do. The rest is just a sign diagram. See, so I, I hope you guys can see it doesn't take a lot of work. Just some thinking. Make your sign diagrams. Only two things that go on it, your x-intercepts and your vertical asymptotes. So my vertical asymptotes was negative 5. My x-intercept was negative 21 fifths, which is like what? Negative 4.25. So I have a negative 5 here, negative 21 fifths there. Vertical asymptotes are always open. X-intercepts are closed. Now i got to fill out the pluses and minuses. Um, I can use end behavior, which is horizontal asymptotes. Oh, crap. A horizontal asymptote is zero. Zero is neither positive or negative. So this is the time when we actually have to go fishing. If, you, if your horizontal asymptote is y equals zero, we can't tell if this is positive or negative by just looking at it. We have to plug a number in. So let's pick a number in this region. What's to the left of negative five? Negative six. Why not? So I'm going to test x equals negative 6. x equals negative 6. You can plug it into the factored form, or you can plug it into the regular. It really doesn't matter. I like the factored form as much as possible. So we get 5 times negative 6 plus 21 over negative 6 plus 5 squared. Again, I really don't care about the answer. I just care about if it's positive or negative. So in the numerator, I have negative 30 plus 21, which is negative, over I don't care what this answer is. I know he's squared. So when you square something, it's always positive. A negative over positive is a negative. So because of this answer, I know that this guy's negative. And then you just fill in the sign diagram. Going from left to right. Do, 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 I'm going to cross the negative 5. Where did I get the negative 5 from? This guy here. He has an even multiplicity. So he does not change. So I know it stays negative. Keep crossing. Do, 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 do. I'm going to hit negative 21 fifths. I got negative 21 fifths here. What's his multiplicity? One, which is odd. So he does change. That's your sign diagram. And then all you got to do is plot it. Let's graph it. Shapes, coordinate system. Um, I got some pretty big negatives, negative 5, negative 21 fifths. So I'll make a lot of negative dashes, say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, so plot everything. Asymptotes, x-intercepts, y-intercepts, the whole, the whole works. So my asymptote is at x equals negative 5. Horizontal is y equals 0, which was the x-axis. I have an x-intercept at negative 21 fifths, which is negative 4.25, which is, I'd say it's somewhere right there. I have a y-intercept at 21 over 25, which is just like a little underneath 1. So I have something like that. So in terms of all the points and intercepts, I've graphed it. All I have to do now is listen to my sign diagram. So I read from left to right. To the very left, I know he's going to start negative. So I know at the very left, he's going to be in the bottom because he's negative. As I move rightwards, I'm going to hit my vertical asymptote. Well, my vertical asymptote will send me straight up or straight down. Since I know he has to be negative, he's going to be sent straight down. So it's going to look something like that. Now, to the right of the vertical asymptote, he needs to stay negative. So I know he won't be up here. That would be wrong. Because he has to stay negative, he's going to start down here. He has to hit the x-intercept. Now, to the right of the x-intercept, he's going to be positive. So I know he's going to stay up here. But because this guy is a y-intercept, I know he's going to have to curl back down. Also, this is a horizontal asymptote, right? He needs to hug the line. That's the job of an asymptote, to bring the line closer. So I know, even though my sign diagram says positive, I know he won't shoot up over here. That's impossible. Because this is a horizontal asymptote, I know that the line needs to continue hugging downwards. That is the sketch.
or the graph of that function. Not a lot of hard work, but some thinking involved. So that's that's it. That's the big idea of 3.6a. If I give you a rational function, you guys should, at the very least, tell me the important characteristics of his graph. And that's what I want you guys to practice today.